Hi, and uh, thanks for joining me here in my shop. I'm going to be doing the visual checkout of the receiver from the Viking console that I've been working on. If, if you're watching my uh, videos concurrently, you've been seeing me work on a Garrard RC121 Mark II turntable. That's what goes with this receiver. When this is in the console, it's facing straight up. So you open the lid, you look down in, and that's what you see there. So uh, Viking is a kind of an off-brand. I don't want to, I don't want to knock it or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> but let's have a look at it. Stereophonic high fidelity. I'm just doing the visual check now. Right off the bat, when I was removing this, I was a little surprised to see that there's nothing connected to the output uh, transformers. And uh, it surprises me because I thought I heard this operate in the owner's home uh, about a month and a half ago or so when I went out to first take a look at it. Um, so either between then and now the speakers were unplugged from here or uh, you know I'm just uh, I'm just crazy crazy as possible. So we're just taking a look at it. Antenna connections. Uh, you know I like these things because they're uh, like, like an engineer's design let's say. Uh, there's a lot of space available so when they're designed I don't think they're they're designed to be as compact as they might otherwise be and I think the uh, engineers have a little more freedom uh, to, to, put, uh, to put into it what they want. So it's got four output tubes here. Let's just take a look and see what they are. 50C5. <clears throat> four 50C5s. That sounds to me like a <coughs> pretty good deal of power. Obviously, it's stereo. Um, this is from around 1950. That looks like a pretty new tube there. It's here in the late 50s, 57, 58, 59, something like that. Yeah, they're all 50 C5s. I'm just making sure because I had been surprised in the past to find out uh, wrong tubes are have been put in. So. Uh, I'm just looking for any evidence of weirdness, like, like the output uh, transformers are cooked. No, they look fine. Uh, all the tubes are in place. I don't see any particular damage. That's a little odd. There's a <coughs> piece of braid here going nowhere. It's got these two... Uh, I believe these are just basically resistors. Um, don't know for sure what's going on, but maybe the heaters here are in series across the line, and this is a uh, resistor to, to uh, drop the voltage uh, down to 100 that these require. Um, where's the power, where's the big transformer? Big power supply transformer. My my, there isn't one. Unless it's buried underneath here. String is in place. Some kind of goop hanging out of here. Waxy goop. Waxy goop. So that's that's its normal. No, that's not its normal. This this is its normal position. So let's try tuning. Okay, it's moving. Feels pretty good. Capacitor's turning. What was that? Kind of jump there. Probably my imagination. A little stiff. Just probably requires a bit of lubrication to loosen that up. Now, let's take this bottom panel off. Look in 
inside. What are the chances that this has been worked on in the past? Since I always like to give odds on things, I think the odds are it has never ever been opened since since the day it was closed. That means I'm standing a bit of a chance here to find that gold bar I'm always hoping to find hidden away. Maybe some old uh, stock. An old stock sheet, that'd be good too. Or just, you know, cold cash would do it. No money inside, no money. It's a pretty smoky situation there. Wow, how would that get such a... Uh, that looks like a splatter almost, doesn't it? Like a, hey, is that my thumbprint? I don't think that's my thumbprint. Hmm. <laughs> so, I'm not the first one in here. You've seen the evidence. What do we see here? Just doing a quick look. You know, it might could be like a wild animal in here, it might leap out or something. But I don't see any of that. I see a very fair bit of paper wax capacitors. It's a great big uh, filter capacitor. end seal here is all cracked to, to nothing. Let me get the close-up camera going so we can take a look at this closer. Okay, so we're starting in the top right corner, uh, which I'm sure is the power supply area. There's a diode. Just one. Just one diode. Some high wattage resistors there, a large capacitor. British made capacitor back there. And a high wattage resistor tucked way up in there. And I don't see any reason why there would be smoke on that. Smoke coming out of this part of it. Here's the top of that capacitor. You can see it's, it's all cracked. Pretty sure we'll be replacing that guy. The modern equivalents, of course, are a lot smaller. Okay. Oh, seems all right. Thought it might be cracked there for a minute. Ooh, there's a big Black Beauty molded capacitor. Electrolytic one back in here. There's another one down here. Hmm. That's a potential trouble there. Like I see the thing looks pretty clean. I mean, it's been encased in metal. Well, maybe encased is too strong a word. Okay, so we're up in the tuning area here. The tuner area. Interesting arrangement right there. Just trying to get the focus right here. Just looking for anything that looks bad. There's another molded capacitor right here. There's another one here.
usually not too reliable because from what I understand a uh, molded capacitor is simply a paper wax paper type capacitor with a plastic case over it and the cases turned out to be uh, they don't maintain their hermetic seal over time they're just about as bad as a regular wax one. Here's a better look at that, these they don't seem to be in bad shape really Oh, the top of that doesn't look right. Oh, is that writing on there? Well, nothing too scary here. kind of luck I'll have getting a schematic for this guy. Yeah, it's not bad. Good chance it's going to work just as it is. That would kind of be my hope. Now, there was something curious on the top that I saw. these two wires here. What do you got two wires sticking out for? Let's see if we can figure out where they go underneath. Well, oh, they're right in the they're right in the power supply area down in there somewhere. wiggling them, but oh, I can see one moving back there. From the power supply. Well, I think that's something to be kind of cautious around until we really understand what those are. Why, uh, why would there be two cut wires like that <laughs> sitting there? Be as simple as a feed to a light, but really they're cut and they've been bared back. I don't know what to make of that. Tuning capacitor up here, looks beautifully clean. A few components right there. Top side stuff that's related to the antenna. Take a look at the output transformers. They, they appear to have been in a different world from the rest of the uh, unit. Uh, yeah. Doesn't mean they're bad or anything, but they, they, they look like they've been singled out for especially bad treatment. You know, it could be they run warm. Nothing here that's scaring me. I don't know, what do you think? Should we, should, we, should we fire it up? Should we give it a go? Why not? I can't think of any good reason not to, so let me stick a couple speakers on there. Okay, time for some excitement here. antenna to my outdoor antenna. Like that. AM of course is a loop here. Now without a doubt I'll be starting this up on uh, restricted
backlight bulb here. Okay, where's the volume? Where's the volume? That's the selector. Wow, it's easy to turn. Balance level. Balance level. Balance level. It's kind of weird. Off and treble, but off. Base. Oh, it must be two controls in here somehow. Yeah, there's a two different shafts. I didn't notice that when I uh, took the knobs off, which are still upstairs in the console. So I'll make sure they're both turned down. And now when I turn the control there, they go together. So we're at zero there. Base in the middle. Oh, trouble. Going to be in the middle. Selecting AM. I think we're ready to go. What do you think? Someone's yelling, don't do it, Jim. Don't do it. Okay. Again, switch is off. Let's see, nothing happening on the light bulbs, which is what we want. Incidentally, although I don't mention this, uh, on the video you can hear all kinds of electrical snaps and pops and stuff as I'm connecting equipment and throwing switches, and none of that is audible to me here in the shop. But actually, you get a little more information than I get, um, because for some reason my microphones or something about my video setup is very sensitive to, to things like that. And the only reason I even bring this up Uh, it's because once in a while I see it on the uh, VU meters that show my uh, voice level. I can see they've gone into red and there's no reason. I can't see any reason for it. So, anyway, enough of that. I'm just delaying, trying to build the tension, build the tension. Here we go. Here we go. Nothing's going. And once again, I haven't plugged it in. <laughs> Excitement. I think I'm going to power it up from my panel. So I'm going to turn it on. The trouble about midway. Put my finger up here. Turn it down. Keep your eye on the light bulb. Very bright light bulb. Very bright. Very, very, very bright. Very, very, very bright. But I can see from this panel meter here that it's charging something up in there. Big honking, ugly capacitor. These lights are coming on. That has more voltage is being supplied to the radio. The lights start to show. Even this one's starting to show. But I do hear something. I hear a hum, I think. Let's turn the volume up. With such low supply voltage right now, um, Wouldn't be surprising if this just doesn't produce any sound yet. Give it a long time. It's going to take a long time to heat up the heaters. And you can see that I'm heating up there. Well, there's definitely a hum coming out. smoke, no flames, no crackling. The hum's not affected by the volume. Just going to keep warming up here. We're at about uh, almost 50% of the line voltage, so it's running on about 60 volts right now. Pretty sure if I step it up, that hum's going to become really dramatic. Oh, paper boy's come. I have to go pay him. <laughs> right in the middle of this. Okay, paper boy went away happy. Now, is there any reason for me to operate this on more voltage? No, I don't think so. I already know that it's humming. 
you've already seen the power supply capacitor looks like crap so really what has to happen here is that power supply capacitor has got to be changed out got to get rid of that power supply hum then we can uh, then we can really uh, power this guy up more and see what's happening so I must be crazy in thinking I heard this operate Yes, definitely, I'm crazy. Hey, thanks for watching.